For successful communication to occur between hosts, network layer packets will travel across many different pathways and take on several different physical forms. The physical networks that connect these devices together could consist of copper wires, microwaves, optical fibers, and satellite links. In the previous chapter, we discovered that the network layer protocols like IPv4 were media independent. That is to say, network layer packets do not have a way to directly access these different media. To help packets along, the data link layer prepares the network layer for transmission and media access. In this screencast, we will learn the general functions of the data link layer and the protocols associated with it. Before we begin this adventure, let's take a step back and re-explore what we've discovered. The application layer acts as an interface between the user and their respective networks. The transport layer is responsible for dividing and managing communications between the services running on the two end systems. These segments are then carried by a network layer protocol like IP to their final destination. The data link layer provides a means for exchanging data over a common local media by bridging the gap between the logical and physical network. As with each of the OSI layers, the data link layer has its own terminology and PDU. Regardless of the protocols used by this layer, these protocols will produce a frame. Frames are what nodes, i.e., a device on a network will use to carry network layer packets across the common medium. The media are the physical means used to carry data signals. And of course, a network is two or more devices connected together by a common medium. To fully understand the role of the data link layer, we must understand how this layer regulates the common medium. The wide range of different media used to interconnect devices together requires a correspondingly wide range of data link protocols. The geographic scope of a network the physical layer implementation and the number of hosts are deciding factors when considering what layer 2 protocol to implement. In this section we will explore the purpose and the need for layer 2 protocols. The primary purpose of encapsulating packets into frames is to felicitate the entry and exit of data on whatever the given medium may be. This purpose allows IP to remain the same while newer network technology or media are being developed. Hence the data link layer services must include all types of media and the methods of accessing them so upper layers can still function regardless of the delivery pathway. This is just another example of why the layer approach is important and why we spend so much time learning it. Notice in the figure that each link between the devices uses a different medium. Between the PC and the router there may be an Ethernet link or a wireless link on the other end. The routers, however, are connected through various standards like serial, optical fiber, and copper Ethernet. In this example, as an IP packet travels from a PC to the other end, it will be encapsulated into an Ethernet frame and sent to the first router, where it will be decapsulated, processed, and re-encapsulated into a new data link frame to cross the serial connection. This process will occur at each of these intermediary devices until it is pulled off the medium by the other end device. As we can tell from the previous slide, the packet can be repackaged into different frames as it travels the delivery path. At each hop along the path, the router processes the frame as follows. Step 1. Accept the frame from the medium. Step 2. Remove the packet from the frame by decapsulation. Step 3. Create a new frame that is compatible for the next media. Step 4. Use this new frame to forward the packet across the next segment. At each hop, the received frame is also examined for errors. In this case, a frame checking sequence is calculated here and here. It will also be calculated here and here, as well as here and here. The routers connected together by a crossover cable will also calculate the CRC as well. The frame will be checked here and finally here. Assuming all went well, frame checking sequence would have been calculated a total of 10 times, once at each interface. If an error is found in a received frame, the frame is discarded immediately. If the frame is good, 
the data link layer directs the packet to an upper layer protocol to determine the next segment the new frame should travel on. In a single conversation, a packet could experience several different networking environments. Much in the way a person traveling to work can experience different driving conditions. For example, when I reach the end of my driveway, I am presented with a dirt road that my neighbors and I share. There is no controlling methods at the end of each of our driveways. That is to say, our driveways connect directly to this dirt road and there is no stop sign or traffic light to control when we have access to the road. We followed the first come, first go rule, and rarely ever do we stop before we access this dirt road. In networking, we would call this method contention-based access. That is, many hosts are contending to access the shared network medium, in this case, the dirt road. There are many different forms of media access control that the data link layer protocol used to access the medium by way of the network interface card. In this figure, we can notice that the router has more than one interface card to handle its various controlling methods. We will explore these methods on later slides. The data link layer has the distinction as being the only layer that is implemented both in software and in hardware. Hence, the data link layer is often divided into two sublayers, the logical link control and the media access control. The upper sublayer starts the framing process by identifying the network layer protocol of the packet. This information allows multiple layer 3 protocols to utilize the same network interface card and media. The lower sublayer addresses the frame, marks the beginning and end of the frame, and defines the media access method to be used by the physical layer, i.e. hardware. Let's see this all in action. When the interface receives the carrier signal, it will strip the data and pass it up the stack. The MAC sublayer will pass the frame to the upper sublayer if the physical address burned into the network interface card matches the destination MAC address of the frame. Since layer 3 addresses are hierarchical and are dictated by a network layer protocol, the logical link control checks to see if the network layer protocol stated in the frame is running before it removes the packet from the frame and passes it up to layer 3. Using the encapsulation described in the protocol, the data link layer prepares a packet for transportation across the local media by encapsulating it with a header and a trailer to create a frame. Control information is added to the header and trailer to help nodes determine where a message begins and ends, who's communicating with each other, and which nodes will communicate next. Fields at the end of the frame form the trailer. These fields are used to detect errors and to mark the end of the message. Depending on the arrangement of the nodes and the logic topology, not all protocols will require all these fields. Regulating the placement of data frames onto the media is known as MAC. Among the different implementations of the data link layer protocols, there are different methods of controlling access to the media. In this section, we will discover that the method to control how the data link layer accesses the medium is determined by the way it sees the network logically and whether or not the medium is shared. Any number of media access control techniques might be appropriate for this type of logical topology. It appears that the data link layer would see Network 1 as implementing a multi-access slash bus topology. On a multi-access topology, each node on the network will compete to use the medium in non-deterministic fashion. As a result, each station can transmit at any time, hence collisions will exist. Assuming this network was designed using the Ethernet standard, then the data link layer will use CSMA slash CD to manage collisions when they occur. Network 2 contains a single connection between each router's interface. Let's assume this medium can handle only half duplex communication. That is, devices can both transmit and receive on the medium, but they cannot do so simultaneously. In this point-to-point -point topology, only one station transmits at a time, thereby avoiding collisions altogether. This method is also known as deterministic or controlled access. The last network, Network 3, examines the media for the presence of a data signal. In this case, the shared medium would be the airwaves. Using CSMA slash CA, 
When a device detects open airways, it will send a notification to all devices that it will be transmitting. It does this before it sends the actual data to avoid collisions by telling all other 802.11 devices to listen. When using the controlled access method, or deterministic, network devices take turns and sequence to access the medium. This makes the network very predictable and eliminates collisions altogether. Typically, this type of control is implemented in wide area networks where large amounts of data must travel long distances. Whereas contention-based or non-terministic methods are used on networks with plenty of bandwidth and shorter geographical scope. This network tends to scale poorly under heavy media use, as their access methods do not have the overhead for controlled methods. Hence, as the use and the number of nodes increase, the probability of successful media access without a collision decreases. Additionally, recovery mechanisms are required to handle these collisions, further affecting the throughput. Two popular forms of control on a contention-based network are Carrier Sense Multi-Access, or CSMA for short, with collision detection, or collision avoidance. CSMA slash CD and CSMA slash CA are basically the same thing. They both monitor media for the presence of a data signal called the carrier. If a data signal is absent, indicating that the media is free, the device transmits the data. Their only difference, CSMA slash CA, will inform all other devices that it is about to send data before it actually sends the data. It does this to tell the other devices to keep the airways free, hence avoiding any collisions. CSMA slash CD checks for the carrier. If present, will wait and check again. When no carrier is present, the device will transmit. Collisions can still occur when using these methods, but this topic is for another discussion. The topology of a network is the arrangement or relationship of the network devices and their interconnections between them. We will explore the different ways a network can be seen in the following section. You cannot tell what logical topology the data link layer sees the network as just by looking at the physical layout. A logical topology is the behavior of the network, or the way a network transfer frames from one node to the next. Logical topologies can be tricky. Let's take a look at this figure to further explain this topic. Between PCA and this switch, I have a physical and a logical point-to-point -point network. Between this switch and that switch, I have a physical and logical point-to-point -point network. And between this switch and the router, I have both a physical and logical point-to-point -point network. The interconnections between PCA and the router no longer make a physical point-to-point -point network, but rather a multi-access network. Logically, however, I still have a point-to-point -point network, since A to the switch, the switch to the other switch, and the switch to the router are still logical point-to-points, so will the sum of all of its parts. Hence, PCA to the router will still be a logical point-to-point. -point. We would call this type of connection a virtual connection, since it's independent of the physical layout. The physical topology, on the other hand, are rather simple to understand. They are just graphical representations of where the company's network wiring and equipment can be located in a building. The other diagram would be a simple example of a physical topology. Here we can see what nodes are connected to what switch and where these devices can be found. In a point-to-point -point topology, the nodes do not have to share the media with other hosts or determine whether a frame is destined for that node. Hence, networks with point-to-point -point topologies have very simple media access control protocols like PPP. In this non-shared media, only two nodes are directly connected together and sp frames are placed on the media by one node or taken off the media by the other node. As a result, the addressing field for a point-to-point -point protocol contains only eight ones. A field filled with only ones would represent the broadcast address, which in this case will always represent the other node. 
In point-to-point -point connections, the data link layer has to consider whether the communication is half duplex or full duplex. Using the traffic analogy, half duplex would be a single lane road, and full duplex would be a two lane road. In a logical ring topology, each node in turn receives a frame. If the frame is not addressed to the node, the node passes the frame to the next node. This allows a ring to use a controlled MAC technique called token passing. Nodes in a logical ring topology remove the frame from the ring, examine the destination address of the frame, and send it on if it is not addressed for that node. All nodes around the ring between the source and destination node examine the frame. In a multi-access topology, every node receives a frame. The only node to process the contents of the frame is the node to which the frame is addressed. Having many nodes share access to the medium requires a data link MAC method to regulate the transmission of data and thereby reduce collisions between different signals. The MAC method used by logical multi-axis topologies are typically CSMA slash CD or CSMA slash CA. The Ethernet protocol would be an example of a multi-axis data link layer protocol. Ethernet, as you can tell by its frame, provides unacknowledged connectionless service over a shared media using CSMA slash CD as the media access method. Shared media requires that Ethernet packets headers use a data link layer address to identify the source and destination nodes. As with most LAN protocols, this address is referred to as the MAC address of the node. An Ethernet MAC address is 48 bits and is generally represented in a hexadecimal format. Unlike the point-to-point -point protocol frame, an Ethernet frame consists of a preamble. The preamble is used for timing synchronization, which helps the other interface cards distinguish consecutive bits. In this screencast, we learned that the data link layer protocol defined the rules for accessing different media. Media access controls defined as the placement of data frames on the media. And Ethernet, when utilized in a multi-access topology, uses carrier sense multi-access with collision detection to control the shared medium. This was another screencast brought to you by Nick Andre, your at-home instructor. For more screencasts and or videos, please visit my YouTube channel. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next screencast.